Hey everybody, welcome back. It is Gene. Got another one for you today about uh, the PC-12 angle of attack system. And this was a question I got from a viewer, and I've mentioned this in previous videos, but I didn't really explain it much, so I thought I'd do a video for you guys about this. So first, a little background about the PC-12 stalling characteristics. So when they were flight testing the PC-12, they did find some pretty unfavorable stalling characteristics because we've got this big old powerful engine out here. It's a single engine airplane, but you've got a lot of torque on this thing. And when the airplane stalls, it does have a tendency to roll. And if you introduce any asymmetry in a stall, you can enter a spin because the wings will stall at slightly different uh, angles of attack. And you'll get one wing that stalls more than the other, and that'll introduce roll, and that's how a spin is born. So in order to mitigate the, the stall risk, the airplane actually was outfitted with a shaker pusher system that's just like what you would find on larger jets. So in order to accommodate the shaker pusher system, the airplane had to be outfitted with an angle of attack system. So on both the left and the right wings, we have angle of attack vanes, and they're just weather vanes. They're little spears with fins on them, and they just align with the relative wind. And that's how the airplane can tell what its angle of attack is. And so that angle of attack system will inform what's called the fast slow pointer right here on the ADI. So this instrument is the ADI. This is the attitude direction indicator. And on the left side is the fast slow pointer. I know this is hard to see because we're pretty zoomed out here, but there's a little F on the top of the scale and there's an S on the bottom for fast and slow. And then on the left side of this scale, there's a little green pointer and that green pointer will just drift up and down on this scale when we're on approach. And that will tell us if we're fast or slow. So we don't actually have a direct indication of the angle of attack in the airplane, but we do have an indirect indication of it right here with the fast slow pointer. <clears throat> so this is calculating 1.3 times the stall speed in whatever configuration the airplane is in. And 30% above the stall speed is where we like to fly our approach. And this is true in most airplanes. So more than 30% above the stall speed is too fast. That will unnecessarily extend our landing distance. And less than uh, 1.3 times the stall speed, we're getting a little bit too close to a stall and we have some risk there. So we wanna be right at 1.3 times the stall speed on approach, ideally, unless we have wind shear, a lot of crosswind, uh, ice on the airframe, other things that can happen to where we would wanna fly a little bit faster approach and be above 1.3 times the stall speed. But for normal approaches, we wanna be right there, right on the donut, which is this little circle in the middle of the scale. That's 1.3 times the stall speed. So when that arrow is pointing right at that donut, that means we're 1.3 times the stall speed in whatever configuration the airplane's in. That's ideally where we wanna be for a normal approach. So I'll just roll this video kind of let you see how this works. So I'm on a dog leg modified straight into this runway at night here, as you can see. And let me pause it just for a second and show you what's going on. So right now I'm actually right on speed. Landing gear's down three green. I've got flaps 30 set. I'm pretty close in, as you can see here. So I've already got the before landing checklist completed. I do have the RNAV approach uh, loaded in for this runway. So you can see I actually have a glide path indicated on this side. That's this green pointer. And I'm pretty much right on the glide path. You can see the Vassy lights out there, red over white. Uh, on a visual approach like this, primarily we're just looking at the shape of the runway. We don't really worry too much about the lights, um, the, the Vassy lights. I mean, you can glance at them and that's that's helpful. But for the most part, you just want to be accustomed to looking at the shape of the runway to tell you if you're high or low. Uh, so I have the glide path on this side and then the fast slow pointer on this side. You can see it's pretty much right in the middle. So I'm on speed and on glide. And again, kind of a modified straight in. I'm just kind of sliding over here to the right to get lined up. And just kind of keep an eye on that fast slow pointer. You'll see right there, it's starting to go a little below the donut. So that means I'm getting just a little bit slow. So I'm gonna lower the nose, add just a little bit of power to correct for that. Ideally, we wanna keep that pointer within about a dot of the donut there of the middle. So there we go, it's starting to come back up right there just a little bit. Now it's getting back to the center again. So just as I'm about to cross the threshold here, right on speed on glide right where I want to be nice and stable and now I'm going to start the flare so I'm just easing the power out and as I go into the flare of course we're going to let the fast slow pointer go all the way down to the slow stop because we're flaring the airplane at that point we're not looking at that anymore anyway we're just in the flare and I'm going to touch down right there go into beta <clears throat> derotate lower the nose give it just a little bit of light braking and then I'll turn off the runway down here on the left. So 
that's how it works. Now on the NG, uh, in the Honeywell Primus Apex build eight or later, the fast slow pointer was replaced with what they call the DSB, which is the dynamic speed bug. And the dynamic speed bug is just a green chevron that's integrated into the airspeed tape itself that will point at the specific airspeed that is 1.3 times VS for whatever configuration you're in. So it makes it uh, even a little bit more clear specifically what speed you want to be at on approach with the DSB, but it works the same way. So there you go. All right, hope that clears it up for you. Let me know what other questions you guys have in the comments. As always, uh, please hit the like button. That helps me out a lot. And subscribe if you're liking this stuff. Hope everybody's doing well, and I'll see you on the next video.